So if I had a topic for this message today, it would be bearing fruit, bearing fruit, but not from the perspective of how I've been taught it growing up or in the church or things like that. I just have a, another way that I want to present it to you. And I think it roots us in, in Christ's intention. I think it just confirms to us what we're really supposed to be doing. And I pray that it just grabs your heart and that it causes you to think about what you're doing, what you're saying to people, how you're responding to them, how you're building, how you're loving, how you're interacting on the work, uh, at, at work. And for me, and I, you know, maybe this is not true for you, but the hardest thing I've ever had to do is learn how to love and learn how to forgive. And though, and learn how to respect people or meet people that are hard to love. Um, and I know I've been a person that's been very hard to love, very difficult to get to know. And when I look at myself and I think about, but God was so merciful that he has allowed me to be around some amazing people. And I want to tell you, if, if, if you all were here in Atlanta, and I, all of you, some of you are, I am making no exaggeration in telling you that the people that the Lord allows me to connect with um, on, on just ongoing are really amazing people. They are loving people. They are earnest people. They are people that really have a heart for God, people that mean no harm. And I can say that for everybody that I've come in contact with that walks with me pretty closely in the School of the Scribe as well as in the Scribal Conservatory. And sometimes when you look at those things, you just have to see, I, I, I count it amazing because we don't have, we have some, you know, every ministry has difficulties. Nobody is perfect. But let me tell you, I, this these last few years, um I'm, it's just been amazing to have um such um not not a lot of crazy ridiculous conflict like the things that i have experienced in ministry and some of you have and so i just want to tell you that it is possible it is possible to have that around you and with you and for me it's been 10 years of greatness i had a great pastor and um, who demonstrated that. I've had other people that I've come in contact with. I have an apostle who walks like that now. So I just wanna just encourage you, it is possible. But we're gonna come from John 15. Listen, this, we're gonna be on John 15 for a while. Um, there, you know, again, it's not gonna be taught the way you're used to, but I wanna share this that my whole life, I thought bearing fruit was about what things people could see, like works. And bearing fruit is not just about works. That can be the evidence that you're bearing fruit. It can be proof that fruit may be present. But what we see sometimes can also lie to us. It can also present things that are not real. It can present things that we want to see. Um, so I want you to see that bearing fruit is more of a heart condition, is more of a position of the mind, a desire or a longing that's on the inside of a person. Um, you know, it's not things that people honor, like crowds, like um, degrees and certificates, like um, their knowledge. It's not... It's not necessarily those kinds of things. It's not power. It's not um, wealth necessarily. I mean, those things can be evidence of fruit and they can go along with things that are wonderful in your life. But I want to tell you too that bearing fruit isn't always pleasant. It's not always something that um, is going to yield necessary, necessarily a result that that makes us jump up and down and scream and shout because bearing fruit can be forgiveness it can be you walking through something that is so so bitter and so so hard 
but you are making progress because you're going through it and you're coming out with the right response. So bearing fruit can be about responding correctly to situations and circumstances. It can be about acknowledging where you are in your own legitimate walk with the Lord, where you can say, my God, I am still a mess. But that's not a, a word of condemnation. It's like I'm bearing fruit. I might be a mess, but this mess is not as bad as it was last month. This mess is not as bad as it was two months ago. Listen, some of the most painful and emotionally difficult times in my life have been the most fruit bearing times that I have ever experienced in all the days that I have been living. And I just want you to know that, that fruit is not just the fruit of the spirit. What's important is that what you produce has the spirit in it, has the spirit riding over it. Because right now, you know, I, 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 you know, you guys who you all who know me know that I like to produce a lot of stuff and I can't help it sometimes when you see me in overproduction mode, I always know that I am in prayer mode. Sometimes I have to set aside and write and write and write or draw and draw and draw or create or craft. I have to do things to help realign my life. And you can't always do that by having conversations, you know, and, and talking and just, I, you know, for me, I don't really process well like that. Not, not really well. So it's just, I'm sitting here this morning and I'm just shocked that God just starts talking to me about this. And I was complaining to my husband yesterday. I was like, I have nothing to do. And I wasn't feeling all that great. But there I was um, just, you know, and I just, I called it a day, went to bed early and just was like, forget it. Whatever you want to do, God, you do it. And so I'm ministering to myself as I'm ministering this message to you because being free of what I thought bearing fruit looks like and being free of what sometimes um, religion makes you believe bearing fruit looks like can be extremely, extremely filled with pressure. Extremely filled with pressure. Let's, let's go to John 15 and walk with me. It says, um, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Now, this is the part that I like right here. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Listen, I want you to just let that resonate in your heart right now right now i'm gonna say it again you are already clean because of the word i have spoken to you now it's important that you know that jesus is talking to his disciples or his apostles and i want you to see that he's building up to giving them some last words before he make that final journey to where he is going to be able to do more for us in the heavenly realm than he has already done on earth. One of the things that um, used to cause me to walk in such condemnation was that I could not recognize how I could have so much messed up in my life and God still love me. How is it that God is not looking at my trash, that he's not, but because, you know, that he's not looking at the mess that I am, that he is, and I, I just struggle with that so much. So this morning, while I'm sitting here looking at what to do, I just heard the spirit say, go to John 15. And let me tell you, when I went to John 15, I wanted to cry. That one sentence began to cry out to me in a way that it never has before. And listen, then I've got Matthew 7, then I got John 13. The Lord just kept flipping me through scripture after scripture after scripture. So if we don't get here, all of it today, 
I want to make absolutely sure that John 15 and three is something you can take away in this moment. Now, listen, Christ, well, Jesus at this time, this was before he became the Christ, Jesus at this time was talking to those closest to him. He was, he had his shepherding heart on. He was standing there with them. And he said, and he's telling the people he loved, the disciples he loved, the apostles he loves. He's saying, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. In other words, the Lord is telling them, he's saying, listen, you accepted me and you believe me. Now, I want you to know that I believe that everybody that's listening to this message today believe Jesus. And I believe that you really love Jesus or you wouldn't be here. I believe that you've already received Jesus. And I believe that you already remember him in the context that makes sense to who you are. And this is what he, he, imagine being around a campfire. Imagine having dinner with the people that make up your most intimate relationships. And this is what the Lord is saying to those people in that group. He's saying, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. We already know that the word washes. We already know that every time we crack open our Bible, every time we immerse ourselves in the word, no matter what we're reading, we always know this truth. We know that we learn more than we knew the moment before we read it. We know that he touches and he ministers to our heart in a way that was different than the day before. We know that those words are filling dark places and dark holes in our heart. We know this. We know this, we know this. And I know that even in our places of inadequacy, that even when we're going through and we're doubting our calling and we're having mental anguish and we're being attacked on every side by family members and friends. And when we feel like people have abandoned us or don't understand us, God is yet saying, you are already clean because of the word. I have spoken to you. And then he says, remain in me. He's saying remain in me for one reason, because he is the word. Oh my goodness. Listen, this year I've prophesied to more people about reading their Bible than I have in a very long time. And I, I was like, God, you're having me tell people who believe they're prophets and apostles and evangelists and teachers that they need to study their word. Instead of studying social media, instead of studying um, um, their favorite celebrities, instead of studying their profession, instead of studying their craft, because I know that when I craft, I'm always thinking about crafting. I'm always thinking about God. You know, I'm not just thinking about new techniques and how I can make this. God is in the conversation with me always. And this remaining in him, and I, I just believe that artists and creatives can tap into this easier and quicker because our gifts by, des by design meditate on who he is. He said, you are already clean. Already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. What else does that mean to me? It means to me in this moment that when you're teaching people, when you're guiding people, and I want you to hear this, when you're leading people, we're supposed to be leading people with the word because the word allows us to remain in him. It's not just that the gospel is that what remains is the fruit of Jesus on the inside of us. Jesus' fruit, his fruit to forgive, 
His fruit to not hold the fence. His fruit to put everything that is upsetting behind him so he can go to the cross. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken. I asked you a little while ago that we were going to have some homework. And I want you to read the Sermon on the Mount. Everybody believes they know what that sermon means. I've even tried to explain it to people and they always go back to telling me what they think. Listen, we need to read the Bible again. Not just from how the Jews understood it. Not just from how um, the apostles interpreted it. There's a revelation for us right now in the circumstances that we are in. It's not going to take away from these foundations. But it is going to speak to our hearts. It is going to show us what it is that God desires and what he wants from us. Oh my goodness, you are already clean. But a lot of people don't understand that believing that they are already clean is tied to reading and filling yourself with what is written. Oh my God. If you're not reading your word, how can you overcome condemnation? If you're not reading your word, how can you overcome fear? If you're re not reading your word, how can you really learn to trust? If you're not reading your word, how can you really learn to love? And if the people that are sent to feed you are not giving you the word, how can you remain in the word? What we have now is a whole bunch of people giving you their opinions on Sunday morning and telling you that the Lord is speaking. Listen, I, I can't be that person. We need depth. We have a lot of superficiality in the body of Christ. A lot of superficial faith. Uh, uh, the word says, I want you to grow deep in him. The most grievous thing to me as a leader in this hour is to know that I've led people that don't have deep roots over times in my life. I'm growing, but they're not. Listen, I'm sharing that for one reason, because we have to have a passion for people to grow deep roots. That's the only reason. And we have to figure out in our prayer time, God, how can I be a catalyst to making them catch on fire? That's why we meet on Sundays in the conservatory. Because we want to ignite. We want to start fires. This superficial stuff is not working. I'm blessed and highly favored. I literally can't stand to hear people say that. And I'm not trying to be funny. I know it may have some deep meaning to somebody, but for, mo for the most part, it's a very superficial way to move through life. Listen, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. We're not remaining in him. We're not reading our word. We're going off of our, our spiritual mind. Well, God told me, God told me, but how can that word be clear if there is no real depth to your reading? If there is not a life, I'm a prophet, but you never read the words of Christ. And you flock to people that are giving you them instead of giving you Jesus. Oh, wow. I don't know. I just know that this is ministering to me today. And I know that neither can you bear fruit 
unless you remain in me. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. How can they hear except the preacher preach? Oh my God. How many times has that scripture been used to manipulate you? How many times has that scripture been used to keep you in a place where people fuss at you all day long? And they give you interpretations of the word that control you, not set you free. Oh my God. When that scripture goes forth, how can they hear except the preacher preach? You need to understand that what the Lord is saying that he's saying that how can you hear without someone giving you words that cause you to remain in Jesus? Remain in Jesus. Remain in Jesus. Remain in Jesus, the word. I am the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. I mean, we can go on and on and on. Those of you who are Bible scholars, scriptures are probably popping off in your head left and right right now. And that's good because that goes to show you, that's confirmation that what you're going to learn about fruit is true. Because he's saying without the word, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in the word. Oh my God, Jesus' fruit is his word. Not just peace, love, joy, long suffering. I mean, what good is all of that? If we don't understand what Jesus bore, he bore an eternal, a forgiving, an ungrudgeful love. And this is what we fight for every day of our lives i'm fighting not to be resentful i'm fighting listen i know this sounds crazy i'm fighting you are fighting don't walk around in that religious spirit i love everybody every single human being especially those walking with the lord the greatest journey that they will ever take in their entire life is learning to bear fruit like Christ. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me, if you remain in my word, if you remain in what I have said, if you remain in my example, if you remain in what I've taught you, if you remain Oh my God, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Oh my God. You're not going to bear scribes. You're not going to bear more art pieces. You're not going to bear bigger crowds. This is not the type of bearing that is for us. Those are benefits. Oh my God. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. You will be image and likeness. But apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words in you, oh, what? He just said it? Oh, my God. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ah, Oh my God, so this is the prerequisite for really being blessed. This is the prerequisite for really maturing spiritually. This is the prerequisite for growth and for process and for going deep and for, because I'm telling you now, all that we are seeing, the fights, 
the anger at one another, the division because we have this uh, different opinions, the manipulation, the control we try to exude, those things are things that must be thrown in the fire. Listen, he's not telling us to throw them in the fire. He's saying to us, look, these branches must go in the fire and they will wither because, you know, they will burn. If you remain in me though, and my words remain in you, ask me whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Let's, let me tell you that we've been praying, ask whatever you wish in it. I'm a son, I'm entitled, I'm entitled, I'm entitled. You're entitled, we're entitled to nothing except the cry for obedience that says, if you love me, feed my sheep, <laughs> you know, feed them my word. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Oh my God. Well, if I'm going to answer this, ask whatever you wish, there has to be a place in my heart that wants to bear fruit, which is, listen, the word residing in you, living and breathing and manifesting in your words, manifesting in your deeds, manifesting in your actions, manifesting in your interactions, manifesting in your authority, manifesting in how you deal with the leaders in your life, manifesting in all these places. How are you walking it out? Manifesting in places where you say, God, I just want you to do what you need for me. I had to tell the Lord one day. I, I was raised up to believe that if I, if I am a believer, it is my responsibility to save everybody in my household. I was taught that. I was taught that my children had to be the ones that I saved first. I had to be the one that my children had to be the testimony of who I was. And that if that didn't happen, something was wrong with my fruit. Oh my God. One day the Lord said, all I need you to do is cry out to me and say, Lord, whoever leads them to Christ, whoever ministers to them, my only concern is that they know you. And I prayed for my children that they know you and live for you and know what it's like to be in your presence while it is day. That's what I prayed. And it took away the burden from me. It didn't, I let God decide how my children would come to him. And I just gave it to him. And I had a major, major thing happen earlier this week. And I was like, oh my God. But if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. I have a question for you. And the thing is, how can we love God and not desire to love his written word? How can we love God and not desire to uncover and, and know everything we can about the God, the Christ of the scriptures, the Christ of the new covenant, the Christ. But I'm a prophet. But I'm a pastor. If you are one that does not even consider or have a burden or take the time to learn the word of God, that make this your moment to acknowledge that. And ask Holy Spirit for a love for the word of God. And then you force it upon yourself. You subject this body to the love of the word of God because that's Christ's fruit for us. The more we know about him, 
the more we understand about him, the more we embrace and the more he's able to remain because him remaining in us simply means this. Every time Teresa thinks wrong, the word of God is going to rise up and correct it. Every time I want to do something that I know I should not be doing, the word of God is sufficient enough to remind me what Christ wants so that I have the tools to resist the enemy and have him flee. But what do we want to do? We want to reach out to people who are powerless to help us, except they give us what Christ gave. Listen, I hope this is making sense because we need to bear fruit. And the fruit that we need to bear is the word of God living and breathing in us. And understanding that every day we are growing into a place that he is becoming real. That he is becoming the living word on the inside of us. There was this song that Fred Hammond used to sing called, We Are the Living Word. And if I can find it before we get off, I'm going to play it for you. That you are the living word. We must stay in the word. And I'm not saying read blindly. I know everybody is not a Bible scholar. But there has to be a place where there is a longing and a desire to know him to the point where the word can really wash. And I don't want this to be a religious message, but he said, you're already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Well, if you're not reading the word, then you won't know that you're already clean. You won't have word that can remain in you. Some of the thought processes of the people that are here right now are trash concerning themselves. And you need to say, God, I've been talking trash to myself. I've been tearing myself down. I have been beating myself up. I need to overcome this. Yes, I, I say the declarations. I make the decrees. I do this. But listen, as a son, as a son of God, nothing works more than the words that he has spoken. Nothing works more than the words that he has spoken. Even if you have to read your, read your own scriptures to yourself and play them in your car. Oh my God. Because that is the fruit. That is the fruit. That is the fruit. Listen, I'm going to go on. This is to my father. No, 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 no. If you remain in me, verse 7, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So we're praying for things without having a place for the word to remain. I'm not saying God is not going to answer you. He's a merciful God. I know how merciful he is. But what if your heart was equipped right? What if, what if you could say to yourself, what if you could say to yourself, I am going to do whatever I can, God, to have your word remain in me so that when I ask, see, this is the key to that, even as you are working it out, even as you are thinking wrong. And I, I was like, this is what happened to me. I'm a person that has had no one, no mother, no father, nobody, nothing. It's just been me and my husband. In our worst moments, we have been alone. That has only ch changed recently for us. No one for us as kids. No one cared whether we lived or died. I was a kid that could leave my house and be gone three days and nobody would care and nobody would miss me. You can get lost in your head with stuff like that when people have mistreated you and have, have done you like dirt and you realize I'm still not healed. I'm telling you. We have to be honest with where we are. You're always waiting for the next person to drop 
to shoot. But the Lord, he said this morning, remain in me. Oh my God. If you don't hear anything else I have ever taught, the only thing that will sustain us in the hour that is coming is the word of God. Us believing it. Believe that you are clean. No matter what that man did to you, believe that you are clean. No matter what your mom said, believe that you are clean. No matter what you have done, because God has forgiven you. He said here in verse nine, you know, he said, this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my students, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now you remain in my love we have to learn how to remain in god's fruit how to remain and remain in christ's fruit how to remain in the spirit's fruit it's all the same fruit i didn't mean to cry i'm just apologizing it's the spirit it's the spirit moving in me as i preach to myself it says if you keep my commandments you will remain in my love oh my god if you do everything that you can to keep my commandments, it's not that you be perfect, but that you do whatever you can to remain. When you've been alone for a long time and you've been the only one you can count on, a lot of you know what I'm talking about. You've been the only one you can count on forsaken by everybody like Christ was. But he believed what God said at that, that moment in Gethsemane. He believed it. And it was enough to enable him to endure. It says, verse 11, I have told you this. Oh my God, he He's saying this to his, those he loves. He's saying, I have told you this, that my joy may be in you. I realized this morning when I was reading this, that I've been trying to create my own joy. And you can't do it. Not the kind that sustains your soul. Not the kind that gives you peace. Not the kind that allows you to sleep at night without regret. You can't, you can't create that. No movie, no makeup, no friendship is going to give you that. He said, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. I'm not saying that we can't help each other, but there are some hurts that run so deep in you that only God can heal. And he said, my command is this, and this is where we're going to stop. And this is where we're going to stop right now because if we don't understand what bearing fruit looks like, you can't hate me because we don't share the same political views, my God. You can't hate me because I don't believe every doctrinal thing that you believe. You can't get mad because I have certain friends or God is doing certain breakthroughs that you have not experienced. This is the superficial frivolous kind of stuff that deep Christians think they understand and they don't. I, I want to show you something that was so profound to me this morning as I read this. I, I'm going to read verse 13 before I go here. Then I'm going to have to flip through the scriptures to find it because I know I have it, but I'm not sure where it was. It says here, it says, my command is this. 
after look so we want the fruit that remains we want to know how to bear fruit we want to know how to reach christ we want to know how to know him we want to know what he wants we want to know what he desires and what he longs for and unfortunately it's not half of the stuff that we hear people teaching but he says this my command is this love each other as i have loved you greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends if you've ever loved people and i realize that i have and people have disappointed there are people i would have taken a bullet for and still would and, and i'm just sharing that as a euphemism i'm not telling you to go out and die for nobody because christ has already done that but i just want you to think about the people you have loved and not just the people who disappointed you because of false expectations but those that really did evil towards you your own parents your own parents that's an ugly thing to know that the people who brought you in this world do the ugliest things to you and here you are and my command is this love each other as i have loved you greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends you are my friends if you do what i command the only thing christ commanded in verses 1 15 1 up until this point was an understanding that we bear fruit fruit that remains fruit that testifies fruit that shows you treated me like crap but here i am mom here i am dad here i am siblings here i am and i'm gonna love you anyway listen this is what god is asking us for and everything the true measure of maturity and growth is to stand here if we miss this we have missed the gospel oh my god if you miss this you've already missed god it's already being thrown and burned in a fire the branches are already being picked through oh my god i want you to see something in um john 13 and we're done it says this it was just before the passover festival Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own. Now, I want you to know that John 13, right here, he's not talking to the whole world here. He's leaving his best to those. Now, it's a message for all of us, but I want you to, when I study the Bible, I close my eyes and I'm like, God, let me see what I just read. Let me visualize it in my holy imagination. Let me experience the moment by the Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me know what was in Christ's heart in that moment. Those kind of things help me because I'm telling you, they help me. They help me see beyond what was written to what was in the heart of the man who declared bear fruit because you're going to see me murder. You're going to see them spit on me. You're going to see them beat me, but I must bear fruit. So here he is in John 13. And he's saying to them, this small group of people, just, just 12, 12 people, you know, we think bearing fruit is the 5,000 or the 70. He's talking to 12 people. 
that he poured the word into, that he has given. I mean, I, I'm so grateful to have a mentor. This person spends time, unnecessary time. Who has done that in your life? Who's done that across your life? I can name about four people. Four. But I, I want you to hear this. In order to find this, we have to find a place that we can call home and trust that God is going. This is why fellowship and community is so important. This is why smuggers board and buffets don't work. Huh. This is Christ with his 12. And he's saying this to us. Having loved his own, we love all people, but there should be a special connection in a group, in a community, not, not connected by the celebrity pastor, but connected by the message of fruit that comes forth. This is changing yet again how I see scripture. It said the evening meal was in progress. They were having dinner. They were having dinner. And the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Oh my God, you know, the plan was already in motion, the necessary plan. Jesus knew that the father had put all things under his power. Oh God, listen to this. Jesus is made, Jesus by the spirit is seen in the spirit. He's sitting around the table and he's already spotted the person in his group that is going to betray him. Every ministry will have a Judas. I don't think ours does right now. I want to make that clear. But every ministry, every journey, there's going to be Judas. Man, and some of us going to have 15, 20 of them before we go to glory. Every ministry. But listen, this is what I want you to see. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. In other words, the fruit that was remaining in Christ could be at peace because he knew that God was with him. He had the fruit that remains. He was the fruit that remains. He was operating in the fruit that remains. Gethsemane brought him into the fruit that remains because he remembered what Christ, what God had promised. He remembered the assignment that God had given him. He remembered what was promised even though all hell was breaking loose. Jesus did not rebuke the enemy in this moment. He did not fight in this moment. All he said was, the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. There are some things in our lives that are put in motion to bring us to our next level. I'm not saying God caused it. What I'm saying is that we have to learn how to use every circumstance to bear fruit. I hope I'm, I hope I'm conveying that correctly because I don't want to have any misinterpretation here because people can read a whole lot of stuff into what you say and you ain't saying none of that. All I am saying here is that the worst of life circumstances are designed for you to overcome and for you to be able to rise out of it so that you will know the word of God that is living and breathing on the inside of you. Yes, we love community and yes, we need it. 
But our first work is to be convinced in our own selves. That's why we can't rely just on pastors to teach us, people to pray for us, counselors. There has to be an inward knowing that there is nothing that I should be condemned for because of what has happened in my life. I am clean. You are clean because of the word that has come alive on the inside of you. You are clean because you are positioned to bear fruit. But the prerequisite is growing into the living word until you believe God for yourself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Listen to this. Listen to what he did. These are his 12. Jesus took off his clothes. He took off his clothes. He exposed himself to them, even knowing that the one who would kill him was there. He released himself into that presence. After having a meal with them, He put all things under God's power. The Lord wants you to put everything under his power today. Everything. He wants you to know that you came from him and that you will return to him. And that is equivocally undeniable truth because the word is declaring it. He wants you to wrap a towel around your waist. He wants you to be the one wrapping the towel around your waist. And he wants you to pour the water in the basin. I'm not going to fight you because of what you believe. I'm not going to fight you because of what you did 10 years ago. I'm not going to fight you for what just happened. Listen, I'm laying it all down. I know you the devil, but I'm choosing not to hate you, mama, dad, siblings, aunts, former pastor. Come on, I need y'all to agree. It's not just me. It's all of you. I'm laying it all down. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was around his waist. And I'm not going to go into the Jewish understanding of the waist towel and the water. It's not important right now. But he came to Simon Peter. Oh my God, he already knew what Peter would do. He already knew what Judas would do. He came to Peter and Peter said this to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never watch my, wash my feet. Listen, I realized that Peter had the best of intentions. Peter thought that he was like saving his leader. He thought that he was like, look, I'm not going to let you lower yourself. I'm not going to, and God was saying, this is not of Christ was saying, this isn't about lowering myself, Peter. I know that this is something slaves do. I know that this is what people do in a, in a particular station in their lives. But Peter, I'm trying to teach you how to love. I'm trying to teach you, Peter, how to put away class. 
I'm trying to teach you, Peter, how not to, to, to differentiate between people. I'm trying to teach you, Peter, how not to have favorites. I'm trying to teach you, Peter, that everybody deserves a chance. I'm trying to teach you, Peter, that this is what I am doing, that I am bearing fruit. I'm trying to teach you, Peter, to let it go. Peter said, no, you shall never wash my feet. But Jesus answered, he said, unless I do, you can have no part of me. Unless I get on my knees and wash the feet of my enemy, unless I get on my knees and wash the feet of those who will betray me, unless I get on my knees and serve you anyway, I can't even go where the Father has me to go. Jesus had to do this. He had no choice. He was the living water, the bread of life, the fruit of us. Then Lord Simon Peter replied because he understood in a moment. His attention shifted because his spirit began to align. He began to see and he began to receive. Oh my God, he began to receive. He began to receive. And he said, then Lord, Peter replied, don't just wash my feet, but my hands and my head as well. It's amazing to me how Peter was always the one that had the revelation that Christ laid at his foot. My apostle taught not too long ago that about how Peter understood that he was the, that Jesus was the son of the living God. Nobody else got that revelation, but Peter did. And here we see Peter sitting here, asked his own question and got his own revelation without the apostle even having to go into great detail. He was able to receive. The posture of the heart is the only thing God wants. Oh, Jesus. Bearing fruit is about your heart's position. It's about what you're willing to receive that God wants. It's about understanding his intention and how to please him. And all the time, he's been telling us one simple thing. You please me by picking up the towel of forgiveness. By picking up the towel that lets offense go. By picking up the towel of, of all the people who've done the most horrible things you could ever imagine. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then the Lord said, in the Lord, then Lord Simon Peter said, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. I want to drown under the mentorship that I have because I have the real deal. I want to drown under the friendships and the relationships that I've built within the conservatory because for the most part, they are real. But until I deal with some things, they can never be as real as they could be because this walk requires us to let everything go as my apostle just wrote when she's here wow we have to have real immersion 
Jesus said this. He said, those who have had a bath need only wash their feet. In other words, just repent because you're already clean. You just got a little dirt on you. You just got a little bit of dirt on you. You're already clean. The word in you has made you clean, but you fell in the mud yesterday. Just get up, wipe the mud off, and it's all right. God, that's what he's saying here. But if we don't know the word, how will we know what he means? And you are clean. But then he said, though not every one of you, because he knew that Judas's heart was against him. And he knew that that heart was not going to change. That's how we know bearing fruit is never about what's on the outside. It's always about what's happening on the inside of you. I am done with superficial relationships. I'm done. I'm done with trying to make people want to be led or want to be with me. Now, y'all might not know, but sometimes as leaders, you're trying to do things, it's over. This is not to hurt anybody or anything. In order for this to happen, I have to put my towel at my waist right now. We need more of this in the body, not less. I'm not going to get on Facebook and share everything. I don't want everybody to see this. This is for those that are sitting and that are resting and that want to eat. These are for people open to receive, not swine. We have to learn what casting swine, pearls among swine looks like. Because I'm not doing that. Oh, my God. Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. I'm not saying that. I don't feel that in the group. I'm just reading scripture. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes. He got dressed again and returned to his place. I'm going to be an apostle now. I'm going to be who I have to present to everybody else because they're not going to get this intimate moment with me, those that are lurking around waiting to kill me. They're not going to receive this. But you, I, I, I took off my clothes and I put my towel among my waist around my waist with you, and I washed your feet. I even washed the feet of my enemy, knowing what my enemy was going to do. And then he says to them, do you understand what I have done? Father, I just thank you today for this message, and I thank you for the grace that you've given me to present it. I thank you, Father, that I, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. The rest of my life does not have to be how the first 35 years of it was. Father, I pray that others here can receive that also, that they understand that I don't have to be alone, that there are people who really care about me, and it's real. It's not fake. It's, it's, it's not. It, when my mother and my father forsake me, you, God, will lift me up. And he says, I put the lonely in families. And some of you are very lonely right now. And I just pray that if this is your family, that you find it. I pray that if there is a, if you are open and if you are willing to trust again, it doesn't matter that you're not in this state. This distance has no prerequisite to love. I just pray that you find what it is that God has for you, that you know it and that you can experience it. Because I don't think there's anything worse in the world than not being loved, not being wanted. 
and our parents, if they do that to us, the hurt is profound. And I just pray that we can find it in this life to know God at the measure that he has released it. I can feel his presence right now and this burden. And I pray that he can release this burden to you. I'm not crying from sorrow right now. I'm not. This is just more healing and I will be healing for the rest of my life. I can't control my tears. Y'all who know me know without a shadow of a doubt that I would never do this, but I have no control over it. And so I just say to you, receive God. My, my homework assignment for you is this. Read Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Stop being lazy. Know the God of the word so that you can differentiate between these hirelings that are all around us in this hour. Differentiate between them. I don't have a hireling as a mentor. I don't. And I know it. And I, I just, and I pray that some of you who are close to me know that you don't have one either. But the only thing that's going to get us through this season is that kind of relationship with God and with one another. That's why that's the greatest commandment. I just can't afford to be fighting with people about this crap anymore. I don't, but even more so now. I'm not going to fight over these things because they're going to burn up. I just pray that we can step into a place where Jesus really is real and not a religion. Where we really are just not hungering for another prophetic word that tells us how to live in this earth, but needs to tell us how to live in our hearts. And I just prophesied today that this will be the beginning and the fortifying of learning how to remain in him and how to produce fruit that remains. How to produce it. How to believe what he said. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you guys for listening today. Again, I have 